almost ready. To double up on this, and one of them needs to like be pushed over. Perfect. Okay, Metopia is on the way. So how about you? How are you guys doing? That song was uh, Whiskey Woman. And it's a uh, very, very distinct of its time music by the Flaming Groovies. You, you can just smell the 70s on that song. You can smell the whiskey on the song. Some people were like, I want to play Fallout New Vegas now. Hey man, whatever, uh, whatever the music does, whatever emotion it evokes in you. So, last time on Metopia, things happen. We got a bunch of new characters, and we will be getting more characters soon. Um, okay, so yeah, what, what do we got here? Nothing. We have nothing, is what we have. <laughs> okay, so, um, Fiona, Mario, evil guy, Ogre. Ogre is amazing, and so is, is Brock. Well, I can choose all of these? Alright, well, Brock and Ogre, please. Scream and God of Blood because I'm going to I'm going to put God of Blood in someone's game and they're gonna hate me for it. The fuck is this guy? What's Who the fuck is God of Blood? The second screen only allows one choice. Oh, it's that's fine then. Don't worry about it. All right, you don't want ragged outfit, right? That's bad. <laughs> of course. Wait, why do I have it? I, I guess Vinisauce has it now. Volume is a little low. Really? It sounds kind of loud on my end. No, this is the usual volume that I, I play this game at. I can, I can probably go up by like 5%. But if it gets a little too loud, just let me know. So yeah, the next set of characters, there's going to be Klingon, I'm considering Alpaca, and we'll see. Uh, I have some ideas, I have some ideas. I think I'm going to hold off on Tommy Wiseau until post-game, which I may end up doing a little bit of, just because why not? So. But yeah, the next set of characters is going to be um, more Tomodachi focused I figured this set is the imposter set, the set of new characters that you could all come to know and love and feel just weird by them existing. Oh, right. Um... Hang on. Records. There was a thing here. So the cast of the town, there's Iwata in one of the roles, and I'm not really okay with that because there's a uh, a couple people were telling me it, it's it's not going to be it, it's not going to be a good matchup. Chowder, I don't know who that is. 
Meta Knight? <laughs> yes! Sorry, I didn't mean to scream, but no, 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 we're not gonna do Guy Fieri, because he's gonna come in later. Batman, please, thank you. No, oh, no, no, Batman. Dave Grohl. I was okay with Batman. Rob Rotten. <laughs> Kakyoin, there we go. Batman, please. I don't know who Kak is. I, I can only- listen. I, I said this before, I know there's people that aren't gonna be happy with my choices. I want you to have some- some level of understanding, considering I am but one human. And cannot please but thousands of others. So, I will say, if I don't do the characters that you like, just get the game, play it the way you want to, and, you know, then you can do that. Or you can watch my playthrough and maybe learn to love Hotel Mario. I have. Have you? I keep jumping at every little noise. Oh, really? Then I probably shouldn't do this. Do what? That didn't freak you out. Was it supposed to? Okay, Ben could have been a good cat. Sure, sure. Yeah, I agree. Mike Stoklaus is still, like, the only weird choice for me so far. Everything else has been pretty good. I would consider changing Mike Stoklaza for a better scientist that isn't Rick. If I can get some suggestions on, say, my Twitter. So if you tweet me at Vinny Vinesauce with some good suggestions for who would make an excellent scientist, I would consider replacing him. Because he's like a real person. But I might, I might still just leave it. Party me's can't be replaced. Oh, really? Well, everyone on this team needs to chill the fuck out. You can- you can edit them. Okay. You can edit, but you can't replace. Let's find out. Let's- let's see how this works. So I could edit the me, but I couldn't- That looks fucking just like him. I couldn't just replace it with, say, another me, so that- that's gonna be tough. Hang on. Let's look. The only character that I thought might make a good replacement would be Lumberjen. Well, I'd have to... If I did any other me, I'd have to make it from scratch. I see a lot of people here that want that to happen and other people who don't. At this point, I want you to know. Your opinion is appreciated. But I think Jan would fit the lore. Sometime in between last time and now, Mike Stoklaza from Red Letter Media was infected by a Jan.
Okay, we gotta find the perfect face. I think that's the one. In all honesty, this- this never quite felt... like... perfect. It always- <laughs> wow, that's a weird look! <laughs> God, that is a weird look. Um, yeah, this always felt a little- little strange to me. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but... it was just... Mm. Okay, I need the exact correct... <laughs> oh no! Oh, this is gonna be tough, isn't it? If only there was just a, an easier way to replace me's. Oh, this is bad. Okay. I think that's... Kinda close? How do you... How do you get rid of the nose? Jen does not have a nose. nose behind the mouth. So I guess I'd have to make it, like, really, really small. Right. Okay, I have a reference image. So I can- I can make this work. It, it's just ever so slightly wrong, isn't it? Maybe that's part of the lore. Maybe Lumberjan, after a long enough time, decided that... Decided that it was time... ...to change up his features a little bit. Maybe, maybe he's just been eating too much garbage. Like, junk food. I love the, um... I love the five o'clock shadow, that is a nice touch. Okay, it's- it's damn close. I think it's almost- almost ready. Okay, that looks a little bit better. How, how how close is this? Is this like 90% maybe? Let's see. Wh whoops. Okay, let's find out. This is like a science experiment. Like doing live Photoshop. If only the fucking background wasn't yellow. This is important. We're gonna make this work. And also, there is new lore to be... ...to be mined from this. People are saying, make the eyes lower. That's a good suggestion. That's a good question, Mega- Mega Man! I 
think the heads are about equal now. That's fucking, that's perfect. Add some stubble. I think that that's, that's damn, yeah, the mouth could be a little lower, but I th that's, that's pretty damn, that's pretty damn perfect. Thin the mouth. Let's try that. Well, o OG Gen has... Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, the mouth is... Yeah, now, now you got it. Now you got it. I never thought I'd have to make this. Thin, not smaller. Oh, you can make it thinner. Oh, oh yeah, that's too small. It's okay, there, there can be some margin of, of difference here. I mean, it's it's so fucking close. We're gonna just get one more... One more check. Yeah, I, I think that's as good as we're gonna get it, everyone. Now, do we want Lumberjan to have learned from his experience of being a human? Maybe he's got some rosy cheeks. Maybe, you know... Maybe he's got, like, a... <laughs> a beard. You know? Maybe, maybe he's just like, he's world weary. How about instead of beard, just the eyes? Eye patch? Oh no. Straw pole? Yeah, fuck it. Let's do a straw pole. I'm gonna make one. Okay, chat. Listen, you're gonna help me decide. This is Lumberjan from Tamadachi, because why the fuck not? And he's been living with humans for a while now. He's cynical. And he he, he emerged from the seed of, of Mike Stoklaza. So he's got Mike's cynicism and optimism is totally gone. So... Do we modify Lumberjan at all? Modify? First option is... Nope. Keep... Vanilla. Second option is... Beard. Um... Third option is drawn eyes. Beard. And... Drawn eyes. So this is gonna be up to you. And... <laughs> wait a minute, is there an eye patch option? Or maybe I can... We can have him <laughs> grow a mustache? Below his, um... Hello, it, it is me. It is I. I'm gonna give you guys a couple more options. Okay. Pole is... available. Go for it. I didn't put glasses, though. You know what? Yeah, no, no, glasses is an option. Glasses is an option. So, go ahead and vote. It's strawpole.me slash 13693145. This is kind of absurd that I'm spending this much time on this, but you know what? It's for the best. I was going to add Lumberjan, and this frees up more room because the scientist is perfect for this character. Okay, there's like 1,500 votes, and people are saying they want the beard. Just that. Like that. <laughs> like, I like- I like that he just now has a little bit of a beard. I wonder if there's a way I can, like, really hide the nose. Oh. 
Oh. That's probably the best way I'm gonna be able to do that. Alright, so... Beard. Let's see what beard and glasses looks like. Okay. One more straw poll. So just so you, you just so you can see the results. Beard is 35% of the vote. So we're going to go with beard. So Lumberjan has acquired a beard throughout the years. This is this is how you know it's going to get good. Did you ever hear of gr a show growing its beard like Commander Riker from Star Trek the Next Generation? It's the opposite of jumping the shark. When a show grows its beard, it means it's getting good. So these are the glasses I would use, I think. Let's actually see if there's anything else. Um, yeah, I would probably do these. Um, one more poll, just to see if we do glasses or not. Some people have said they wanted glasses, I'm just curious. Or we could use the thinner ones. Alright, well, take a look. Glasses, yes or no? And, oh my god, it's split. Holy fuck. Oh, come on! This, this isn't fair, come on, I need a more definitive answer. I'm gonna say, I'll tell you what, I'll make the deciding vote and I'm gonna say no, because he gets goggles with the outfit. So we're good. Yeah, I like, he's just growing his first facial hair. I think I'm okay with that. That looks pretty good. There we go. What's the war- we'll leave it endless trash for now. It's like the remnants of his previous personality. The stubble is from when he was Mike. He needs to be shorter. I'll make him a little shorter. I think that's good. What's that? Wait a minute, hang on. Well, one more potential change. I might not go with it, but let's let's just see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm sorry, well, here's the thing. Mike still clauses me was a little on this side. So maybe maybe the character needs to lose the weight. You know what I mean? Maybe it starts like this and then later on ends up like this because the gen's body is metabolizing and adapting to its new environment. Like, the traces of Mike Stoklaza are still there, but it's it's becoming less and less of an issue. It's becoming, at some point, he's just going to keep the stubble. This is too much, but you know what it is? If I could just, like, bullshit with the lore around it, then it's fine. Just gotta do some, like, grade A bullshitting. <laughs> Is 
he's tall. Well, he's yeah, he's kind of tall compared to some of the other. I, I didn't realize how short Speed Luigi and Hotel Mario were. I will slowly modify Lumberjan as we go along. Oh shit, uh, you need to... You need to get timed out, son. What the fuck is wrong with these cobras? And they have faces on their bodies. They've got like arms and like stu like stubby arms and faces on their bodies. Someone in chat just said, I have an option for lore. Lumberjan died. And Mike was near him when he died, so we ended up getting like some scraps of lumber on him when he ended up taking him over. I kind of like that. I like the idea of Lumberjan is now a peaceful Jen and a helpful John, but he had no choice but to take over Mike's body. So he had to use him as a new host. But Mike was so fed up with this fucking world, and he was just, like, totally, totally done with everything, as evidenced by the following image that I will show you. I really need to use a new cable for this. That he was totally okay with it. He was just like, wow. Wow. You know, after this, he was just done. He was like, fuck it. Just take it. Yeah, all those Tamadachi fans are getting fucking- they're just creaming right now. They are creaming. Tell an enemy a little white lie to distract it. Add dubious chemicals to a friend's weapon to widen attack range. Dubious chemicals, you say. Candy consumption has elected a new source of power by some vagina of arcane. The more MP candies you eat, the greater the effect will be. They will improve again once your team has eaten 10 MP candies. Long lost brothers. They didn't even know each other up until just now. The transformation is beginning. It's a, it's a wonder Speed Luigi can eat anything considering his tongue is out of his mouth most of the time. Ice cream microphone. Speed Luigi's going to eat that. I wonder if Speed Luigi, like, eats his tongue as well, and then, like, a new one grows back, kind of like, um, the tail of a... What is it, a salamander? Salamanders grow their tails back? <laughs> one, one of them there, lizards. Donner? No, no, like McDonner's. <laughs> Chat. 
Chessie McNougat. Or you can take it in the darker direction. Donner kebabs are actually just, uh... Well, it's, it's, so it's like soil and green. It's people. Is this what you really want? This is what he really wants, then this is what he gets. Hotel Mario wants some cotton gloves. Th those are fucking Mario gloves. Those are perfect. Oh my god, it's like, um... It's like the character from Arrested Development. Wait, not Arrested Development. Uh, Always Sunny. Whose family member is that in Always Sunny? The one that, that is... That has to, like, wear hands? Like, rubber hands? Always arrested in development. Uncle Jack. Charlie's Uncle Jack. Right. Right. Yep. The lawyer. Always curb your enthusiasm, develop- enthusiastic development. Sweet whispers. Telling me a little white lie to distract it. Let's- let's see what that looks like on the Cobra. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, Speed Luigi. Speed Luigi's a fucking superstar. Love and peace. Love and peace. Spread the love and help a friend let go of their quarrel. Ringo would have made a good, um, option for this party. Speaking of Ringo, someone emailed me a couple weeks ago and was like, Vinny, I want to send you some Ringo Star socks. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, you have them already? He's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want them. You can have them. I was like, okay. I mean, as long as they're not used. So I give the guy my P.O. box. He sends me the Ringo Star socks. I get them. They're not officially licensed, and they're George Harrison socks. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the, the gesture. The, sorry, the gesture. <laughs> not the gesture. I appreciate gestures, too. It's like a blurry JPEG of George Harrison printed on socks. I mean, you you almost got it. It's one of the Beatles. How long is your weird game email backlog? Mate, that thing is like months and months long. I mean, my email backlog just in the past week alone has been just absurd. I, I try to devote a couple hours on Sunday to going through my emails and replying to as many as I can. 
So, if I haven't replied to your email, tomorrow I'm gonna probably bring my laptop to a park and just fucking at least get some air while I'm replying. That, that's that been actually kind of nice. Well then, here you go. What the fuck is this? Hello there, they call me the prodigious postman. It's Crom from Fire Emblem. I have a letter addressed to a Mr. Vinisauce. Crom, you look silly. Isn't there a better way you could be spending your time? Dear Vinisauce, I have decided to relinquish one of my father's choice snacks to you to aid your journey. Stay safe from Lamb Chop. That's, um... Thank you? How the fuck did Krom get in the cave? Like, there's gotta be a better way- Why is there an inn in the cave? You know what? Again, Hotel Mario. His reach extends long and far. Just like Speed Luigi's tongue. Rhinoceros beetle specimen. Hmm. Huh. What a thoughtful gift, Speed Luigi. That's, um... Jeez. How much, um, do you think that would sell for if I sold it to, say, Tom Nook? Awful polka dot costumes. Jesus Christ. Toy lab gear. Yeah, this is perfect for Lumberjan. Lumberjan thinks he's doing real science, but he's just playing around with ketchup and wearing, like, toy lab coats and shit. I need that demonic spear, please. Roast. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's some things you can do with ketchup. I I'm sure you can probably influence a compound with ketchup and make it do some really bizarre shit. I, I wouldn't imagine ketchup would be one of the compounds of choice to keep around a laboratory, though. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know for a fact. I'm just quackulating. Don't do that. Fuck! Well, we eating good for a couple of days. Good god grub. What is that face? Was this fucking face? This is why, why do they now have the three as a face? It's a Carl fucking Pilkington face. They're all full. But it's- it's such a- it's such a beautiful face. The Rick and Morty ball face? Oh, you mean when- when their mouths look like ball sacks? Yeah, that's- that's probably one of the better faces. In cartoons.
they do turn into flaps, but usually not sideways. They kind of hang down. I saw the Waluigi genie. Lumberjan is just fucking going mental with the science experiments. Combustible ketchup. Yeah, me and Jen are making close friends. Again, he's a reformed Jen. He, he's, you know, he, he feels bad for the sins of his race. But now, what he thought was the best thing for him, which was to become human, because he just wanted to become human more than anything. You know, he loved the way humans created you know, art, and music. He loved human culture, movies. And then, when he inhabited the body of Mike Stoklaza, he realized, I've made a terrible mistake. Everything sucks. Oh, new outfit? Hmm, not bad. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. fossil. How old are hermit crabs? Well, it doesn't really look like the, the hermit crab I'm aware of. Not those little, like, you know, shitty hermit crabs they sell at the Jersey Shore that are neglected by the people in the stores that sell them. That's a horseshoe crab. No, but I wonder, like, how long have hermit crabs been on this planet for? Like, how long has the hermit crab been a part of... of life? Ten years. Oh, fuck. 135 million years, huh? I like that. That's a little more accurate than I'd say 10. Hermit crabs were invented in 1987. A whole two years after I was born. I couldn't- I can't believe it. And you know what? The, the way you say that, that they were invented, that's something Carl Pilkington would say to Ricky. Uh, when, um, when hermit crabs came out. Well, what if they were invented? What if the Nephilim and the Anunnaki invented them together? Hmm? Crazy. You would never know. Clearly, it must be ancient aliens who have created the, the hermit crabs.
The first ancestor of the hermit crab appeared near the end of the Jurassic period, 145 million years ago. Now that sounds about right. See, we're just a flash in the pan compared to hermit crabs. They're they're the true like lords of this of this planet. And we call them hermits. They're probably more outgoing than all of us combined. Bah. Lumberjen, a bro? Did you fall into a hole? Are you okay? I'm fine. You go on ahead without me. That's- that's okay, I guess. Wait, what, really? We'll meet you at the inn. What the fuck? Did you toot, Vines? <laughs> Hotel Mario, who's directly behind my character, just said, Did you toot, Vine Sauce? Cats don't have particularly good smelling, do they? Or they- they do, right? I mean, not as good as dogs. But why- why is- did you toot in the game? <laughs> you know, like, what the fuck? Someone on the staff of this game had to input that as a random dialogue option. They usually smell better. All right. Well, okay. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, dogs sometimes smell very wet, and and you know, dogs have the tendency to sometimes smell like dogs. But cats usually don't smell too shitty, right? I I did toot, by the way. Yes, that's correct. If I were to smell a cat, I would be um I, I would I would like. Break out. My allergies to cats are intense. I cannot smell cats. We've got a lot of time on our hands today. Time for a new look! Oh! I'll be back in a sec! Ta da! You are a beautiful princess. You look like a little person! Flask. We're probably not gonna get that, but... Come on. Tube flask. Tube fuck off! Tell Mario and Speed Luigi become even closer.
I don't, uh, I don't mind using Jolly Jaunt to increase relationships because the relationship skills are actually kind of amazing. And I, I was a little bit resistant to that because you could sell the ticket for money, but I think the relationship status is, is very useful in battle, so it's, it's kind of nice to have. I didn't get exactly what I wanted, but that's fine. Okay, Lumberjan needed to be, um... ...modified slightly. Because Lumber Lumberjan is a kind gen. Lumberjan is becoming more himself and less Mike Stoklaza. Hey, climbing out of a hole is really good cardio. hole is going to reappear. No. No hole this time, comrade. Give him the old naughty pitchfork. Which I'm pretty sure is a brand of vibrator. Or if it's not, does anyone want to go 50-50 on a business decision? I've got an idea! Vinny, any theories as to why Mike Love was such a cunt? Um... Hmm. Hmm... I don't know. I don't know enough about the guy to fi to understand why he was... Maybe because, uh, here's the thing. He was- he was a singer in the Beach Boys. But his cousins were so much more talented, and Al was really talented too. So Mike had a, a limited range of- of singing. And... Brian and- and Carl were, like, amazing singers, and they could hit so many high notes. Uh, and Mike was kind of just very... Just, he had to be within the comfort zone. And I think... He didn't play any instruments in the band, maybe tambourine. So, all the other guys in the band could do what he did... ...better. And I think, over time, that might have gotten to him a little bit. And he tried to find ways to justify his existence within the band, and... ...within the world. Uh, he also, he loves to name drop, I've, you know, in interviews... You'll find out that, um, Mike Love loves to tell people that he, he went on a retreat to India with, um, you know, the Beatles, and he name-drops Muhammad Ali at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is still one of the most embarrassing speeches I've ever heard anyone give. Um, you should look that up. I'm 
I'm talking about Mike Love Retro. Uh oh. Good impression. No. <laughs> Lumberjen, you're becoming more like your father. And he also, you know, when when the band started kind of dissolving a bit and Brian was no longer able to do a lot of the stuff that he was once able to do, there was a danger that the Beach Boys would fade into irrelevance and Mike Love was like, I am the Beach Boys. So there's a, there's a lot of potential... I mean, this is real life lore now, but there's- I, I don't know enough to really give you uh, a definite answer, but I can tell you that there's enough out there that you could read about that would probably connect some of the dots, I think. And that's why he's our Dark Lord. Uh, I'm beat. Can we take a break? Shh. Keep making so much noise and something will hear. What was that? See? No, I didn't. It wasn't my fault. Oh shit, the dreaded cow cave. Sorry, cave cow. <laughs> oh, this thing is mad. It's coming from deeper inside. It's gonna... it's gonna milk all of us. The revenge. Oh, it's like a minotaur, but... It makes cow noises? Yeah, I guess so. It's kind of a cow, right? It's more like a bull. Strong like bull. Lumberjan cares. See what I mean? Oh shit. That was a really good attack. Oh! Well, it was then that the party knew they needed some titty sprinkles. <laughs> Vinny, you should read everything in chat. Okay. Let me just activate my fifth brain quadrant and let me grow an eye on the side of my head and then I'll have that for you. I will do it for you. Sorry, Lumberjan. Oh fuck, a beef burger? You missed something important about bulls and cows. How many brain quadrants do you have? Uh, four. But I, I use pre precisely one of them. Do bulls moo just like cows? Hang on. A bull, also known as a sire, is a mature male bovine that is at least two years old used for breeding purposes. A cow is a mature female bovine that has had at least one calf. Hmm. That's good. Okay, Google. Do bulls moo like cows? Here's some results from the web. Do... 
do bulls say moo? Wow, it actually got me the right answer. Um... Bulls moo as cows do, but you'll get tons more aggressive grunting. Because they literally have a pair. See, now that was what I was thinking. I was- I was thinking about that- that aggressive grunting. Yeah, there you go. See, we learned so much today. We learn on the stream, too. We're not just about memes and- and, um... Me being bad at video games. Sometimes we learn a lesson or two and get a little swole. Okay, Google. Play last podcast on the left, most recent episode. Alright, here's the latest episode of last podcast on the left. Episode 280, the Enfield Poltergeist Part 2, Poopergeist. Okay. Thank you. I wonder how... I I wonder how many people's phones in the chat just looked up the exact same thing. I'm not sorry. There's a couple chat members who are above the word poop. They're so far evolved that the word poopergeist coming from a robot voice does not amuse them. I want you to know. Teach me your secrets. Tell me how to ascend to master levels. I would like to... Well, I would like to evolve past this human form, and if you could help me do so, that would be greatly appreciated. First, you must shit. Alright, what if I smear the walls with shit like the pooper guys did? Okay, now that's kind of fucking freaky. But it's better than polka dot. Yeah, there's- there's something- there- <laughs> oh, no! I'm not making it flesh-colored. There's something very demented about this particular outfit. Activate your sixth brain quadrant. That's the best answer I've heard yet. So wait, if more of my brain quadrants are activated, I can fully ascend past all the trappings of human form, such as laughing at the word poopergeist. Oh. Working on it. I see that Waluigi genie. I, I want to get to that motherfucker right now. What's this hole in the wall? The jewel we picked up. Okay. Okay, here we go. Story. What? What are you looking at? Give all that treasure back. Just gotta read it with emotion like that. Come off it, kid! This whole desert is my turf! What belongs to the townspeople belongs to me! Now, run along home! If you won't listen to reason... Oh, snap the lamp! <laughs> There's no way you could know how it works. 
I don't remember it. I, I actually don't remember the, the fucking thing. Mmm. <laughs> it's his name. Look, Waluigi's a pooper geist. Waluigi. Ark. Hi, did you not do that? Waluigi. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on! Waluigi. I'll give all the treasure back, even last the coin! Hello and welcome to the Hydraulic Praise Channel. Please, I am begging you! Uh... Well, look, I'm... I'm sorry. I'll return all the treasure to the townspeople. War hard. Waluigi is going back to the town with the treasure after him. Look, if I need to scoop up Waluigi again, I will. But you remember in Kingsway how I gave those... Those old, like, monsters a chance and they apologized. I'm very sorry for what I did. Here is all your treasure back. Shiny. Mwahaha. <laughs> People of next door, I have a little present for all of you. I hope you like the taste of despair. Is that Mike Love? <laughs> My lawyer is ready. You there, lad? Hear an old man out, will you? Just when you thought it couldn't get any r worse. Now that the Dark Lord's gone and made short work of us, it was terrifying. Took the townspeople's faces clean off. Flap! Make the genie of the lamp look like a pushover. Never seen a more dastardly evil mastermind in my life. What's the Dark Lord think he's playing at? He even stole poor Isabel's kisser. You can't just do that to people. She had the sweetest smile of anyone I know. The Dark Lord zipped off to the pyramid in the north. Please, teach him a lesson, would you? So here's a new song I wrote by myself. It's called Next Door Girls. Well, next door girls are hip. I really dig those faces they wear. Well, I never. Finding hidden treasure is no easy task. Oh, hello. Explore a rabbit at your service, self-proclaimed. Lately, I've been mapping out the Great Pyramid for fun and profit. The, the most, it, like, the smartest, most successful person in this entire town is the fucking rabbit. Wow, even Waluigi Genie lost his face. Poor Batman. Once was Iwata, but then trained real hard and became Batman. Who's Ash from again? Oh, you know, Pokemon, only the biggest fucking game franchise ever. Almost. I was like, who's Ash? Ok. 
guess we can start by grabbing um, one of the feces faces. Mike loves nephew Kevin, said Mike gave him a stapler for Christmas once. You can't be serious. I, I don't believe that. I think that's Japes. But it's so believable. I had the best dream last night. Oh yeah, what was it? A mountain of money rained down on me. It totally buried me. I couldn't even breathe. It was a total nightmare. Is that really the best dream? Jab speed Luigi. It's real, he actually gave Kevin a stapler. Oh my god. What's what's great about having Mike Love as the Dark Lord is there's actually real life lore. This is a guy who gives you a stapler for Christmas if he's your uncle. Well, you know, I'm a beach boy. I've made millions of dollars from the beach boy's music that I have falsely associated with myself and myself alone. And, uh, well, your old Uncle Mike has got you a nice present this Christmas, young Kevin. You're my favorite nephew. It happens to be this here red swing line stapler. Also, I'm changing your name to Milton. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you don't want Uncle Euron Greyjoy, at least. Unstable formula, deadly concoction that deals great damage to all enemies. I just noticed you're wearing a new outfit. You look pretty good, said the devil to the scientist. Sounds like a Bob Dylan song. And then the devil complimented the scientists on his outfit! Some, like, deep metaphorical meaning there. Now that... is a true science man. Still using ketchup, however. Hotel Mario hasn't gotten any toast. One day. If I were rich, I think I'd be a cat. A cat, or maybe a dog would be better. Well, you are a cat. A dog, make up your mind. What, what a worthwhile and fulfilling interaction between those two characters. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, Lumberjen spent a long time on 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 the internet in the past couple years, learning all kinds of things on the internet, going to certain hubs. Well, that was certainly nice of me, not to toot my own horn. I, I, I tooted, and then gave Lumberjen the old banana. Oh fuck, maybe we can jump into the painting, and go into a whole new world. Nikki is now a mountain... ...painting. Oh, okay then. This reminds me of, um... Oh, uh, what was- what was it? Ultros in Final Fantasy VI? Oh. No! But... you- you can't die. There's- there's no one left to possess. We all desire to keep our souls. Actually running out of sprinkles for once. No, don't do that. Fuck. This team is more like a family. Well, some of them liter literally are family. This should do it. No. Nope. New skill, playful antics. Oh, this is a very strange thing. I, Hotel Mario, I am severely allergic to you and you need to stop that right now. Good shit, my scrub!
Okay, that's gonna go to Lumberjan. Lumberjan could use the extra XP. Art cookie. <laughs> They kind of know each other now a little bit. Let, let's let's see what they have to say to each other. That's fascinating. Oh wow! Look at that. Finally, legit science can be done. Oh, man. I kind of like that uh, ice cream. Oh, oh, okay. Thanks, Speed Luigi. We, we absolutely needed another fucking... HP banana. Uh, I'm just gonna leave Hotel Mario like this. I want you to think about, like, Bob Hoskins in the Mario Brothers sequel, where he has to play Mario as a cat. Because that's pretty much what's happening. I know Hotel Mario isn't exactly Bob Hoskins, but it's- it's- It's close. I'd say the closest... Mario 2... The one we got in the Mario Brothers movie... Is Hotel Mario. Rip Bob Hoskins. Yeah, it's, it's probably a good idea to clear out some of these spots to get some extra experience and gold and stuff. So I'll do that. Does Ron Jeremy count as Mario? As a Mario? <laughs> yes, he counts as a Mario because he, he uh, dressed as Mario once, didn't he? For a photo op? That move is so fucking good, Lumberjan. Like, holy fuck. What's my tier list of Marios? Captain Lou, I think, is, is number one, just because I grew up with Captain Lou. But, you know, the thing about Captain Lou is that he wasn't an amazing actor. Watch the Super Show, and watch it from the perspective of Captain Lou forgetting his lines, or rather, them simplifying his lines. Like. You'll notice that Captain Lou plays Mario very oblivious. And Luigi is the one who, like, takes care of everything. He's the one who takes command. Danny Wells was an established actor. Captain Lou kind of just says a couple things. Does a couple things, gets nervous a lot, and then Luigi takes care Mario, don't worry about it! It was- there's a lot of improvisation on that show. There- there was. There was a lot of improv, but I think any of the stuff that was scripted, they probably had to keep really simple. So... Yeah. Yeah, that's- that's my- that's just my, like, theory. That's my Vine theory. I- I remember when he goes, hey, fuck you, Luigi. That's- that was my favorite moment.
And yet, Hotel Mario still hasn't had any toast. That's Lou, you go to hell before you die, Albano, yep. Super Horneo Brothers? <laughs> I believe I'm listed as an actor in Super Horneo Brothers. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Nintendo bought the rights to it so that it would never be seen again. And that was Ron Jeremy in that? Okay. That explains a lot. Fucking Lumberjan is amazing. Where will this lead us? to Hotel Mario being thirsty. What is that? A bottle of water? That doesn't look like water. It looks like... like snake oil. It, it looks like... indigestion medicine. It was full of sand. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to me, but I, I love that. The fact that Hotel Mario just drank sand. Like, you'd think after the first sip... Nay. As soon as the sand touches your fucking tongue, you would know to stop drinking, but Hotel Mario just gulped and gulped and gulped. make a joke about not liking sand and all that, right? It wouldn't be too hard. Anakin would never drink sand. Yeah, you're right, chat member. Hotel Mario likes to change his look often. What are you doing? For fuck's sake. Hotel Mario needs to be stopped. Whoa. Whoa, uh, the leather club is two blocks down. Jesus, fuck, this is like a... fucking masochist sex outfit. Finally, Hotel Mario will eat his toast. And he didn't like it. That's the universe playing a trick on us. So, yeah, I'm gonna need a little, uh, Tums Festival. Don't mind me. That coffee kinda... I think, um, it was good. It wasn't, like, moldy or rotten or anything, but... I need to have a festival. No, the coffee wasn't sand, or was it? Luckily, I don't abuse Tums like Rich Evans does. 
which is to say, he exceeds the the um the recommended limit because he's a rebel. I mean, he doesn't even give a shit. It says here. Do not take more than 10 tablets in 24 hours. I'm pretty sure Rich Evans took, what, like 20? In an hour and a half, maybe? Less? Are they gummies? No, no, no. Also, I just got done listening to Pauly Shore talking about how Joey Diaz gave him a pot gummy and he started fucking freaking out and he had to leave the podcast with him because it was like hallucinogenic and he couldn't it was so strong that he couldn't speak anymore and I was thinking to myself man that would have been a great thing all those years ago they could have just given Pauly Shore a, a fucking pot gummy and that would have saved so many people so much pain Don't eat any type of weed Diaz gives you. You don't want to- listen, anything- I wouldn't- I don't think I would accept anything from Joey Diaz. If you don't know who Joey Diaz is, I, I can't do it justice, just look it up. He's a comedian. And he's also, I think, insane. And I mean that lightly, or... I, I don't think that word is strong enough, I should say. That that's not even a strong enough word. Joey Diaz is a fucking phenomenon. And, uh, yeah, he- he does- he does things that no human should be able to survive, but he manages to do them. No problem. So, yeah, Pauly Shore went to his- his place to do a podcast with him. Joey Diaz gives him half of a gummy. HALF of a pot gummy. Not even a full one. And Pauly Shore, after 15 minutes, can no longer use his voice. So that just showed, you know, it should, and he was- apparently Joey Diaz was eating those things like Skittles. He was like, what, what the fuck is the problem? No problem. I don't know, I, I think it was like 500 MG. I think that's the number I remember, I could, it could be wrong. In 2007, Diaz ended his long-time cocaine abuse, quitting after one of his cats sniffed the substance in one of his bags and died. Oh my god. I didn't know that. Rip cat. Jesus. Yeah, maybe, maybe, uh... Maybe if you're leaving open bags of cocaine around your house, it might be, it might be a good time to stop. And if you're eating 500 weeds in one gummy, son. No matter how often I stop to fix it, my sock keeps falling down inside my shoe. Why sock? Why? Lumberjan still has trouble adjusting to being a human. Pretty sure that, um... Yeah. That, that's- that's a shame about the cat, though. I don't- I don't like hearing about that. That's- that's really... That's really sad. But, I will say, I'm- I'm almost positive... ...that the cat... ...got so high... ...that it ended up becoming like an elder god. So I'm pretty sure its spirit wanders the planet, helping, helping us, helping Earthlings, you know, as a, as a Melchizedek. So I'm, th I'm thinking it's it's completely gonna be 
I think it's gonna be okay. It's a spirit. It's a spirit elder cat. Eighty HP. HP sprinkles. I'm a beacon of hope. MP candy effect enhanced. There we go. Why don't you, uh, get out of that little jabroni outfit? Oh my god. This entire party is going to become the village people. We're close to it. throughout this entire area, at the very least. Lumberjan! Holy shit! That is such a good fucking move. I don't need to, but I could definitely use the experience and I can use... If there's any treasure chests around, th that would be really helpful. Do you know what MP stands for? Mutating ponies. <laughs> what? No! Why would it stand for mutating ponies? You know, magic and stuff. Transformations. Magic points. It stands for magic points. That's a really weird thing that you would say there, Lumberjan. It's every now and then, Lumberjan says something about, like, mutilations and, like, ca cattle mutilations and abductions and probing. And it just, it gives it away. stands for Mahina Pia. I guess it would. I guess it would. <laughs> no. MP stands for Monty Python. Right? You remember that Monty Python? I don't think you know what it's like to be, um, around people that quote Monty Python word for word. Because I've, I've had a couple friends, or I've had, a, I've been, or let's just say acquaintances, but I've been around people that knew, like, every word to the parrot sketch. And as much as I love Monty Python, it's all. I am now the ice cream devil, tempting you with sweets. It looks like white poo. 
Yeah, it's white dog shit. Dog shit. Okay, final path. Just want to 100% this cave. Japan usually censors poop by turning it pink. You know, it, it really is a weird world we live in when... When I was at Six Flags, it was just... You know, all the games... You would win, like, the prize was poop emojis. On so many of them. There were poop hats. There were rainbow poop hats. There were, like, plush cubes with poop on them. You, you really couldn't go more than, I'd say, a hundred feet in any direction without seeing poop of some kind. Oh yeah, I mean Patrick Stewart hats, correct. Do you think it's gonna take a meteor? Is that what it's gonna take? Like, like a... You know, maybe like one the size of... Um, like a football field, or something like that? Is that what it's gonna take? Hmm. How many megatons? 30,000 megatons? Oh, okay. Just wanted to make sure. Vinny, did you watch the Emoji Movie? No, I haven't. I haven't. Not even for my, um... My- my love of Patrick Stewart would I see the Emoji Movie. I feel like I'm missing out. I've been told. I've been told it's good shit. Hey, listen to this. Whoa! So I heard something about Hotel Mario recently. Oh, fuck. Rumors? You'd never tell just by looking. How sad. Wait, what? What did I miss? I looked at the chat for one second. What was the rumor? Did someone say my name? They never say- oh, okay, they didn't- they didn't actually say what the lore was. Speed Luigi's like, he's gone terminal! Sorry, wrong voice. <laughs> Sorry. It's gonna be a fucking MP candy. Magic up on Jan. Okay. Cave is completely finished. Now let's go. Uh, oh wait, no it's not. No it's not. One more path. I don't think you get anything for 100%ing a specific area, but I can at least say I did it. And again, the experience is gonna make later battles a lot easier.
Oh my god. <laughs> we all suffer when Speed Luigi sings. Again, it's just the tongue getting in the way. Oh! No! Oh! 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 You enjoy playing pranks on people, right? Us pranks perish the thought. Whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> Speed Luigi has fallen into a pit of mud. Only it wasn't mud. He knows about my japes. He, he also knows that we're gonna start a prank channel soon. On YouTube. So why is it that the word poopergeist can make me laugh? Yet... Well, I think it's more because I like the way the computer says poopergeist. I think that's that's the thing. But I was gonna say, why does that make me laugh, but yet when I see poo emojis for sale at Six Flags, something inside of me rejects it at all costs. There is a difference, right? I need to know. It's a different piece of shit. Plays on words are funnier. Because it's the mainstream overused commercial bullshit that gets to you. Because one feels like it's forcing a meme. Well, here's the thing, it's not forcing a meme. It's selling a meme. That's like when you go on, um, like a, like a McDonald's Twitter account, and they're like, Um, Hey fam. Y'all up? Come to McBagbomb and grab yourself a dank McNug. Finna get a burger. <laughs> Finna get a burger. Come on. Subway. Eat Finna. McDonald's. Finna have it your way. <laughs> I can see the, the, like, the logos. It's just, it's, they gotta be replaced. I also watched this very interesting video. It's like a half hour long video about why The Simpsons, um, went to shit after season seven. And it explains like the counterculture origins of the show, the writing staff, the cre the creators, and how it went from being like kind of subversive satire to becoming part of the mainstream. It wasn't just new writers, by the way. I mean, it was a lot to do with the new writers because Conan O'Brien was a writer. He was great. They lost a ton of their writers, but it, it just became... I mean, he also hypothesizes that it was a product of its time, and that it might have lost, like, steam anyway. But... People have asked me about The Simpsons and, and if I've ever, like, watched it... ...religiously, because a lot of my friends growing up... <sighs> ...watched The Simpsons, and I, I remember... I remember liking The Simpsons when I was young, but I didn't really get 
I just thought it was silly cartoons. I didn't really get why it was amazing until years later. Here we go get in the leather outfit. It took me a while to realize what was going on and why it was such a, a big deal. But this video sums it up. I don't know if anyone has a link to it. I'm not going to try to find it, but, um... It's currently at its lowest rated season yet. And that's pretty, um... That's pretty shitty. Okay. This whole area is now finished. No rewards. The Simpsons is is not about the Simpsons anymore. It's about guest celebrities. That was one of the things that was mentioned when it was uh, less about the gag of like having a celebrity voice something kind of subversive and more about like, oh my God, it's it's Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh my God, it's Tony Hawk. That's right, kids. It's me, Tony Hawk. That was good. The Tony Hawk Pro Skater. That's correct. I do want to watch the first seven seasons of The Simpsons at some point. Like, I want to see why it's so... Um... Revered. Because I, I, I watched enough of it to know, and I know... You know, some of the jokes are extremely, extremely well put together. But one day I'd like to actually go through some of the episodes and really, like, kind of watch it from my perspective now as an older person and not someone who was, like, fucking five when the episodes were airing. Six, seven, eight, you know. Faces have been swiped here, too. What could the Dark Lord want with all these faces anyway? Well, we're never going to find out. Unless we follow him! After that dog lord! Hang on, my shoes are untied. You don't have shoes, you're in a fucking leather jabroni outfit. Can you explain to me what a jabroni is? Uh, it's, sure. I mean, it's it was, I think, popularized by the Iron Sheik, and it was a term in wrestling. Me and Mike were talking about this actually. Uh, like in like carnivals, it was used as a term to explain like someone who just you know did the job. It was kind of like a a, a term of derision, like almost an insult. Like a jabroni is a jobber. Like he- oh, he just gets the job done. There's nothing special about him, he just does the work. Something like that. And the Iron Sheik started calling people that, um, in professional wrestling. To, um, insult them. And then, I guess The Rock, years later, heard the, um, heard the Iron Sheik talking about the word jabroni and calling people jabroni a lot, and he loved it. So he started calling people jabroni, and that popularized it. And then, Billy Harrington, this is the most important moment 
in all of this word's history. Billy Harrington himself called Van Darkholm a, jabro a jabroni in the gym, in the locker. Why don't you uh, get out of that jabroni outfit? And thus, the word was solidified in the hearts and minds and penises of all of us. Wait, that wasn't Billy Harrington that said that? It was Mark Wolf. Oh, I only know two of those guys because of that video. I know Van Darkholm and I know Billy. Who the fuck is Mark Wolf? That was Mark Wolf? Wow, everything I know is a lie. Shit. Wait, how do you guys know this anyway? Hmm. Hotel Mario, taking care of his hotels. A jobber is someone who fails to make someone else look good. That makes sense. That's a really good way to describe that. Yeah, that's that's exactly. Oh, yeah, we're the leather club now. Now we're the fucking leather club. That's exactly the way I wanted to describe that, but couldn't for some reason. Um, yeah, that, that that's pretty much the best description of jabroni, I think, right? Jobber, someone who gets the job done, takes the fall so someone else looks good, which is an important thing. That's that's not. I mean, in pro wrestling. That's not something to, um, to laugh at, because, you know, if you can sell someone else's hits, you can then make both of you look good. The match, you can make the match look good. Some wrestlers are selfish fucks like that, and won't do their part to sell the hit. And then you have people like Bret Hart, who is a consummate professional, who could sell anyone. I mean, Bret Hart could make Hulk Hogan look like a good wrestler. Ooh, shots fired, I know. And I like the Hulkster. Yeah. I was never a huge wrestling guy. I guess we're gonna sell them, I already have them. I was never a big wrestling guy, I liked it a little bit when I was young. My cousins loved it. Well, again, my large fucking pool of cousins that I have to reference. Um... I got into it a little bit later on, and I remember watching Bret Hart some like DVD about Bret Hart and I was like wow this is actually really interesting and then I ended up watching a couple of you know Wrestlemania's and all that stuff this guy John who was a bouncer at a bar invited me and a couple of my friends like well, I guess he just took a liking to us so he would invite us over his house this guy's like a biker dude tattoos fucking tough no nonsense listens to metal didn't give a shit this dude, when you get to, like, know him, puppy dog. But on the outside, you would not approach this guy to be his friend, but we used to hang out with him outside the bar because he was a cool dude. And he was funny, and he said some really fucking outlandish, bizarre shit like putting thumbs in people's butts. Don't worry about it. So we used to laugh and talk to the guy, and then he was like, oh, you know, why don't you come over and watch wrestling with me? And it was like, okay. He was like, yeah, no, I'll get it on pay-per-view, you come over, I'll make you some spaghetti! And me and, like, three of my friends, and he would invite, like, one or two people over, 
and he would fucking make spaghetti and meatballs for us, and we would watch wrestling and drink beers. I miss John the Bouncer. He was a good guy. I don't even know his last name. To this day, I don't know his last name. But... John the Bouncer. John the Bouncer he was. He gave me a metal, like, guitar pedal. Like a guitar effects pedal. He was learning guitar. I tried to teach him a little bit. And he gave me a fucking... It's called the Metal Muff. Laugh all you want. Google it. It's real. It's, and uh, he, he didn't use it. But I gave him a couple bucks for it. And I still have it. I don't like the way it sounds, but I always appreciated that. Who has never-ending thirst for fun and games? Only me, your friendly neighborhood quiz master, Dr. Phil. Let's find out how much you know. Want to play general knowledge? I have three questions for you. Let's begin. Okay. Question one. What number is this question? One. Wow. With whom did Princess Lamb Chop grow up? Cor Coral. How many arms does a squid have? Wait, what? Oh, an octopus has eight arms. Wait, what does that have to do with Metopia? I like how the first question was, what is the number of this question? And then it was like, yeah, you need to know how many arms a squid has. Here I am thinking squids aren't real, because some dude on the Miiverse during, uh, for Splatoon 2 said, I wish squids were real. Oh my god. Can- can someone just analyze this... this moment? It's Luigi in a fucking leather... sex outfit. Mario dressed as a cat. And Luigi saying, I wonder what it feels like. This is such a fucking bizarre game. To have your face stolen. That doesn't make it any- any- <laughs> any better, really. It kinda tickles. But it's a bit hard to breathe, and your head goes all fuzzy. It's kind of a warm, fluffy feeling. Whoa! How do you know all this? Oh, I don't know, I was just using my imagination. Ugh. Someone in chat just said, the Dire Dire Docs music begins to play in the background. Cut to a scene in the bathtub of Mario climbing Luigi over and over and over again. Cut back to a face of Luigi. Cut back to the scene. Dire Dire Docs continues to play. Luigi! Luigi, what are you looking at, anyway? <laughs> yep. Uh, yep, of course. Cactus acupuncture, yep. Yeah, I bet Speed Luigi would like that, too.
Yeah, the art's gonna be, like, especially weird tonight. Actually, I'm probably gonna get going in a couple minutes. I've been streaming this game for, what, two and a half hours? That's, that's usually my limit. Mega Maker was an hour and a half, and this is going on 2.15 about. I could go a little bit longer. That coffee I drank earlier is passing through me. Oh shit. Jan wants to be with me. But it, what's the problem? Oh! A, pre a human present. A silver spoon. What are you trying to say with this? Oh no. I'm sorry, Hotel Mario. Oh fuck! some decent money. Oh, first, let's see how this goes. I'll do one... one trip to get some of those friendships boosted a bit. Or... I could just get a baby bottle. This is not... No, this this is not science, Lumbergen. Lumberjack keeps getting this shit wrong. He hasn't been hit human long enough to understand the difference. Yeah, Hotel Mario and Lumberjan could use a little bit of friendship. Because they just had a moment. Lumberjan, uh, Hotel Mario got a little, little envious... ...of Lumberjan. So now they can become at least acquainted. Ah, uh, I get it. Yeah, it's baby formula. I see. Uh, baby formula. Or any kind of formula sounds... semi-legit. For Mr. Scientist, man. It's okay, I can sell the Bab Bottle. I mean, I'm gonna have enough baby bottles I can start Bab Crew. No, that's actually pretty good. That is a good amount of gold. Oh, finally! Look at this thing, this is fantastic. This is exactly, well, I mean, between Skull Spear and the fucking ice cream, both could be jabroni weapons. The duality of Jen.
Jen thinks he's gonna see in 3D. Luigi is a village person. There's no doubt about it. I say young man! I meant young man! Good grub. That was the Hitachi magic wand. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. Adoge! Foo! Okay, okay! Adoge! Yeah, I haven't seen Hadoge in a long time, but the, that character... That character was pretty popular for a while, huh? You don't know where OK OK Hadoge comes from? It's a character. Uh, from a Japanese TV show. This, this dude... It's H-A-A-D-O. Not Hardo. Hado. Razor Ramon, that's correct. Just look it up. I'm not even gonna try to explain it. But if you want to see some dude dancing... Well... So, I watch the show, uh... Downtown a lot, which is the, the, the You Laugh, You Lose show. I mean, it's more than that. You know, with Matsumoto and... Tanaka and Endo and all that fun stuff. I love that fucking show. I don't... I'm not, like, too crazy about a lot of Japanese stuff. Like... I, I wouldn't consider myself to be... a fanboy. By any means. But I, I definitely enjoyed the Gaki show. And I've watched most of the You Laugh, You Lose that they've done. It's a live-action show. And, um, the idea, they, they put them in, a, like, a, an environment for 24 hours. And if they laugh, they get punished. It's called a Batsu game. And it's fucking hysterical. You want me to say weeb? Okay, I wouldn't say I'm a weeb. I was just trying to be nice. But fine, I'll say it. No, I wouldn't say that by any means. But there's things about that culture that I find hysterical, and their TV shows in particular are, are astounding. Um, and, and fascinating. So, yeah, uh, the, that show is amazing, and Hadoge showed up on the show and started, like, doing pelvic thrusts. And it was fucking hysterical, and then I found- that was how I found out about him. And then I started watching his segments, and... There's like a ramen shop <laughs> episode or something like I, I haven't seen it in a couple of years, but it's it's fantastic. Link an episode. Um, just type Japanese show Batsu game B A T S U game or like downtown. It's it's called Gaki no Tsukai. I believe, is how you pronounce that. G-A-K-I-N-O-T-S-U-K-I. K-A-I. One of the things I would recommend is the, um, the gym. I'll link that. I think it's on YouTube in full. Uh, I think they took it down. There was like a punishment gym where they put them in 
uh, Matsumoto put them in a gym and they were just punished for 24 hours. I think it was called, um, Endurance Tag. It used to be on YouTube in full, but doesn't look like it is any longer. So yeah, someone probably find it, but that that's a really good introduction to how batshit crazy that show is. 24-hour endurance tag. I think that's, yeah, that's that's probably the first time that might have been my first exposure to that, that show. Hearing Vinny say Batsu game is surreal. Well, you know, like Barrett once said to Cloud, I'm just full of surprises. Jess, sorry, Jess full of surprises. Oh, Marissa's here. Yeah, Marissa. We've watched Gaki. And also, I think Marissa was probably in the early days one of the people who, like, showed me more of it. I think. You probably know more about that show than I do. But yeah, it's a great fucking show. All oh, right, you want to be next to your brother. I want to be next to my brother. Time to strengthen our puny mortal bodies. This is for someone special. Is there a particular site you're streaming Japanese TV from? <laughs> Not that I remember. There was um there was a site. I think Shibata Bread was a translator who did fan uh, subs for this this shit. But I don't remember the site that I got it off of years ago. It's just been too long. I haven't watched it in a long ass time. But um yeah, I wouldn't even know where to begin these days. Hotel Mario sounds like Dink. Actually, my Dink voice doesn't sound very much like the real Mr. Dink. I would say that my Mr. Dink is closer to Hotel Mario. Team Gaki now, and it's it's all on Daily Motion. Okay, good to know. I remember Daily Motion contacted me like six years ago and was like, "Hey, do you want to do a partnership?" I was like, oh, "Okay, maybe." I didn't understand what the partnership was. I think they just wanted exclusive vine sauce. And then they dropped the ball and, and it just was a bad deal. It was stupid. I don't really remember. Yeah, I know I dodged the bullet, but I don't I don't really remember what the what the the stipulation was there. And then, um... Oh fuck, what was the other thing? Guys, you remember, there was, there was another site that the, the one that Screw Attack was on? And I did like one video for them? What the hell was that? Game trailers, oh my god, yeah, game trailers contacted me, and they, they were gonna, um, they were like, hey, do you want to be like Screw Attack? I was like, like, angry video game nerd, you bet! They were like, okay, just modify one of your corruption videos, give us some exclusive content, and we can make you, like, a non-exclusive deal, so to speak, where you can upload to YouTube and this... And it'll be like, screw it like, I think at this time they were failing, and they were just trying to find whatever, what, like, whatever. And I remember I, I did the one video, it didn't do as well as they hoped it would, it was like a Zelda Corruptions video I put on there. And... They never got back to me. And you know what? It was for the best. It was absolutely for the best.
Well, when you're first starting out online, you don't know what to do and what not to do. Especially a couple of years back, it was it was so like, it was so um, nebulous. And it was like, okay, well, here's a thing. I know AVGN is on there, and, and I love AVGN, right? So, maybe I should take the deal. And it wasn't even a money deal. That's the thing, it was like they weren't even offering me any money, it was just, be on this site, and we can get you... ...you know, next to the Cinemassacre videos. And then, just around that time... ...pretty much everyone was, was, um... Stopping the exclusive stuff. Oh, hey, Batman. Like, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Red Letter Media for a while was using their own video player. A lot of their videos were exclusively on their website, and they were making a certain amount of money from that. And I believe that was happening with Cinemassacre, too. But yeah, around like the same time, it was like, nope, bad business model, and then everyone just stopped doing that. Yeah, I haven't kept up with all that other stuff. Wonder how RLM is handling the ad fuckery that YouTube pulled. Well, they have a pretty successful Patreon. They don't... They don't necessarily need... ...to, um... ...change what they do. Oh, that was an amazing attack. Adpocalypse is, is really hitting a lot of people, though, so I, I have no idea. I know, I know some channels are probably gonna end up going... ...down, or there's gonna be less. But, I'm doing okay. And again, I'm doing okay mainly because of, of Twitch. And, um, I have multiple YouTube channels. And, um... Every now and then I sell a t-shirt or two. I'm- I'm really- I'm fine. I, like I said, I live modestly. I don't live in a fucking mansion or anything. I keep... ...things... ...super, super, super low and I save a lot. Because, like I said last night, and I won't go on about this like I did last night, but... ...there's this whole thing of... ...um... ...you're not- you don't have job security. When you- when you make YouTube videos. You never know what's gonna happen. So... Live within your means, and save. That's my advice. And I- I keep it CLEAN! Fuck yeah, poison flask? Can't afford it. Shit. That's not a real microphone, Speed Luigi. What are you doing? Where can I buy your shirts? Well, I'll tell you what, don't worry about shirts. When the new shirts show up, then we'll talk. Onage is putting out a couple of um, items, vine sauce socks and, and shirts, and the plushies are gonna come back. Like, actually, decently... Teespring has disappointed me on a number of occasions. They're not bad, they serve their purpose, their designers were pretty good for a while. But it's like completely different people than when I first started there. So I think we're gonna... I, I, I'm personally much more a fan of Onage, their designers. And the dude that I talked to, Jacob, is... ...awesome. So... I'll let you know when that happens, but I'm- I'm fine, I'm not hurting for a squirtin' right now, so you can... ...hold off. Eventually we'll have some good t-shirts and... ...you know... ...I'm sure you'll- you'll hear about them when that happens. What if you buy Vine Sauce socks, and much like the Ringo Star socks that were given to me but had George Harrison on them... ...instead of Vine Sauce... You get, like, I don't know, the hydraulic press channel. 
Or Vsauce. You get- you get Vsauce socks instead. Or Germa. Just- it's just Germa's face. Did you even listen to a word I said? Oh, give me a break. Are you still giving me flack? I was happier when I was a monster. Oh yeah, thanks for helping me. You can have this. The people have got them now, no. But yeah. I'm good. I think I'm done now. I'm gonna get going, guys. Uh, we do have a lot of art, too, so... I'm sure that that's gonna take a while. Um, been streaming for four hours and eight minutes, so yeah, I'm, I'm done. We'll rescue the rest of the faces on a later date. And we will defeat Dark Lord Mike Love on that later date as well. So thank you so much for watching Metopia. This game is actually really entertaining for me as well as you. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. Why don't we take a look at the art?